It's a day in the death of Danny B. Strung out, waiting to die. Nothing to laugh at, no one to cry. Just another dirty gray day in the death of Donny B. Just another dirty gray day in the death of Donny B. Drugs is just a waste of time. Just to be normal, you have to go to a lot of hell. It's like suicide, jumping off a bridge. I know he's killing himself, and I have a sneaky suspicion that he knows it also. This is one of the places where you usually find a junkie. This cold, narrow, steel barred cell. You will see him in here, double up in pain, sweating it out, waiting for tomorrow. I really didn't know who I was, you know, what I was or where I was going. He is socially dead, morally dead, and soon he will be physically dead. Drugs are a cop-out. It really doesn't help the matter any, you know, makes it worse. You're a poor person. Here you have a very expensive habit. In fact, you're really living like a rich person because here you're giving yourself something which is going to cost you quite a few dollars per day. And where's the money going to come from? No one's going to give you that much money a day. And, and as your habit grows, and in other words, as you use more and more drugs, this is inevitable. It's, 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 you know, it's going to happen that you need more and more money. And no one's going to give you that as a gift. It's going to have to be sorry for you and give you money just to be giving you money but because you look sick because you your habit is coming down on you you're going to have to get the money somehow so you're going to steal there's no future for him you know as it stands in reality there is no present because he's really non-existent his whole world consists of, let's say, of him. The crisis consists mainly of the hassle of trying to get that dollar. You know, stealing, lying, cheating their friends. They like to use people for what they can get. They might as well be dead. My husband has been around this problem quite some time, and when it hit our family at first, it sounds so cruel for my husband to say, well, I guess I better go out and get some more insurance out on him, because since he doesn't give a damn about his own life, at least we can make some money from it. And I thought this was very cruel to have my husband say something like this. But then when you sit down and think about it realistically, this is exactly what he's doing. 
What has to happen, the addict has to like change his present view that he has of himself. If he doesn't, he will remain a walking corpse. And, and until this thing happens, he will continue on this path to nowhere. It's a day in the death of Donnie B. Can't see a blue sky above. Can't feel the raindrops. Can't feel the sun. Can't know a lover. Couldn't have one. Can't feel the snowflakes. Can't work or play. Too busy finding a fix for the day. Just another weary, weary day in the death of Donnie B. Just another weary, weary day in the death of Donnie B. When you come into court, you see these people standing before the, the, law, uh, the law, you can realize, gee, I remember seeing that person walking around, you know, the neighborhood, you know, a few months ago. And they must have seen all the addicts, they must have seen the people hanging on the streets, and people that were without clothes and shelter because they used drugs. But that didn't seem to impress their minds. They probably were saying to themselves, well, that will never happen to me. I, I'm starting to use drugs, but I know I won't be like that. I'm not that old, I'm young, and I can take care of it, I can control my habit and all this kind of thing, you know. Most of the people we do arrest are the minor people, the street addicts, the 18, 19 year old person. We just in junk, use four, five, six, eight, ten bags a day. Arrest them for either possessing narcotics itself or for putting various crimes they need to do in order to get the money to supply their habit. And he spends anyway from six months to two, three, four years in jail on each offense. It's kind of hard to see a young person almost near death because he's stuck a needle on this arm. A person who's vital, has a, who has, has a lot of life in him. We should be going to school and we should be playing, you know, playing basketball or something, yet, and has a body to be able to do these things. This happens time after time. I've seen even teenagers almost dying, fighting death. Many people stand around in the crowd, you know, and watching this person, if they see this kind of thing, and there's not too much sympathy for it. This is a different kind of death. He's sleepy, his nose is running, he itches. He feels cold, he feels hot. He doesn't even know what the sun really looks like. He's literally living in a world of illusion. He's like a zombie. It's a way of living for Donnie B. Jiving his friends for a buck. And nothing else matters. Nobody cares. Hanging around to raise a little bread for the death of Donnie B. For the death of Donnie B. The great bulk of the junkies are still in the same place I left them at. 25 years ago, I was in the streets, a detective making an arrest, and today I see the same fellas who've been to jail off and on, off and on, off and on, on the same corners, in the same stinking cellars, in the same rooftops, and their friends have died of overdoses or just being sick from the junk. And uh, they're still in the same spot, nothing has changed for them. But most of my, most of I know in 20 years ago already dead or in jail. I found better things to do. I saw that wasn't me. I want to live to be an old man, real old man. It's, it's hard to describe. It's just really a way of killing yourself. No more school, no more future. It's an abysmal end. And I tell you, I'm not trying to put any kids down 
or any people down, but start with junk, it puts you down. It's the needle and vein for Donnie B. Freezing his muscle and brain. Bottle cap living, bottle cap dead. Just another dirty gray dawn in the death of Donnie B. Just another dirty gray dawn in the death of Donnie B. So this, it's a pretty rough story. There's no easy way to tell a guy, don't take it because you get jaundice, because you get syphilis, because you die. No, he's, he does, doesn't want to listen. This, this guy knows everything about dope. The only thing he doesn't know, he doesn't know that when I see them in the autopsy room on a Monday morning, you see this fish-eyed look looking up at the ceiling. It's the end of the road. And then you got to call the old lady and his mother and tell her to pick up the brown paper bag up front and take all his clothes. That's the end of the road for her boy. And then she says, why, why? Goodbye, Donnie. You're feeling no pain. Messing up your life with that needle and vein. Just another dirty gray dawn in the death of Donnie B. Just another dirty gray dawn in the death of Donnie B. Say goodbye to the people, Donnie. You're going away soon. Goodbye, Donnie. Goodbye, Donnie. Goodbye, Donnie. Goodbye, Donnie. Goodbye, Donnie.